Yeah, man, it's the 21st of August, 2023, and I want to go into some subjects that can give you some direction on some of the things that you should be learning or at least looking into or trying to understand about computer stuff that can help you with your gang stalking situation. Okay, so um, back in the day, a long time ago, uh, over 10 years ago, this started for me, and I didn't even know it had started for years after that. But when it did start, uh, there were some people that I was associated with, uh, even close to, and I was able to see some of the things that they were doing and then later correlate that to, oh, that's what they were doing because they were getting their neural monitoring and they were figuring out how to do gang stalking, neural monitoring type of things. And so I knew somebody that was not a computer person whatsoever, didn't have one. Um, and this was just when smartphones were becoming popular, um, starting to be like a normal thing. And um, this person had never had any computer skills or interest whatsoever. But suddenly they started acting very different with their life. And at the same time, they also started taking this huge interest in computer stuff. And some of the things that they were interested in uh, is what's given me a lot of the direction to understand how gang stalkers operate and some of the things that are important if you want to study these um, subjects. So uh, the first thing was that they started to work with Android developer. Uh, and that's, you can go to developers.android or Android developer or whatever, and you could study it yourself. And this person was using an iPhone and an iPad, and they did not have a computer. Um, but one of the things that I noticed that they were doing is when uh, they would go on to the internet, they would always go to the browser, to the address bar, and they would type in something like static, uh, static dot PHP dot something, you know, and it would, it would change something about the way that their results would come up in searches and things like that. And uh, I'm still shamefully not knowing exactly how that works because I should know that by now. Um, at the time, I didn't realize that it had any importance, but um, about five or six years ago, I, I really knew completely that it was very important and it's my fault for not knowing more about that now, but this will be the kind of the direction of this channel moving forward. Um, but they would, they would put that in and it would allow them to, um, to have much larger search results. And if you want my speculation right now, I think that they were logging in or uh, going through a private server, okay, on, on like private internet from somebody who has their uh, computer server slash whatever configured uh, to be private and have neural monitoring stuff going on and then hosting to all the, the local gang stalkers within that group. OK, so they would just type that in and then they were going through the basically the gang stalking private connection server uh, and they were able to access stuff that had to do with gang stalking that wouldn't come up typically on a on a browser search, whether you're on your phone or on a computer or anything else. And, um, you know, to to extend on that, I, I actually started to learn about that back in 2017. I was teaching myself about web development and working on like some websites and stuff. And I got to the point where I needed to be able to process languages like PHP. And you have to go into like configuration files and enable that kind of thing. And then you really have to set your computer up as a server. So you do that with localhost and it's some more configurations and it's, but it's, it's starting to tip the iceberg in what these gang stalkers are doing. And I was having a ton of problems with them hacking my stuff and doing things to my devices at that point in time. And a lot of that stopped real abruptly when I started to learn about uh, local hosts and, and how that started working. Now, 
to um, to my fault that I didn't continue to learn that kind of stuff because I got pretty good with HTML and CSS and being able to put together static web pages. But when it came to like server side stuff and using like PHP and I, I didn't I didn't go any further at that point. And I should have because that's what makes websites functional and it's also a different level of knowledge. So you really have to uh, know a little bit about database stuff and a little bit about actual coding. And then you start to put all that together and it starts to be something. It starts to be something that's dangerous for gang stalkers to mess with you if you understand those kind of things. So, um, you know, this person that was static, PHP, whatever, whatever, putting that into their browser all the time. And at the time, I, they they had no idea that I was going to become who I am now, this targeted person that, that went public and made the YouTube channels and told everybody how broadcast stuff is going on and all of that. But, um, and, and they ended up being, um, a, more of an adversary than anything. Uh, so, you know, it's when somebody becomes a gang stalker and you become targeted, then that's what happens. You know, they, they whether they're the direct responsible for it or not, uh, you, you become somewhat of like enemies, uh, to a degree. All right. So, um, that kind of information was, was starting to dry up at that point. And, but I didn't really know what all that information even meant at that point, but they were on Android developers all the time. And they were putting in that static PHP stuff in their, uh, browser address bar. And it was enabling them to, come up with search results that had to do with gang stalking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, I believe they were, um, I believe they were going through a private server from, you know, one of their people in the group that had it set up where everybody could just from their phone, go into this through this private server. And that's how they had it set up. That's just what I think at the time right now. So, um, but also they had a hosting package suddenly, and they also were on Android developer all the time. And then they came up with this virtual Android on their iPad that they could log into. And if they could log into it, there's a couple things that can happen. They can have it actually uh, installed as like uh, disguised as an application on a device. So like it could have been on the iPad installed as an application but I think uh, in this case, I think that they were accessing it where it was hosted online through the hosting site that they had um, created an account with and, and bought a hosting package. So I know that that's a, another big way that they do it. They put virtual devices on your device and they'll, um, they'll disguise it as an application and they'll uh, go into like a regular application like Gmail or, or Facebook or something and completely modify it to suit their own needs. And then they operate from there like a from like it's a, a completely separate device, like a virtual device. And a virtual device can have a separate phone number. Uh, it can have all separate information. It's just using the same hardware as the actual device is, you know, so your software and your apps is using your hardware, your phone or your laptop, whatever, and their virtual machine, which is just the same as your little apps and, and software, they got their apps and software and they use your hardware to host that or they can use uh, online hosting to host that. And that's where they'll hide neural monitoring stuff uh, oftentimes. And it, like I said, it can have a different phone number. And, you know, a lot of times things will get crossed up. So like, um, you know, you might you might type in something on uh, like a search on on Facebook, for example. And the things that come up won't be anything related to what you search for, uh, but it'll be related to uh, like these. Like, for example, just to give you a solid example, if I went on Facebook and typed in a search for like my different pages or my different groups, Sometimes some of the people that I know to be gang stalkers and, and part of my problems, they would come up in that search right there with my page and then them. And it's like, how are they coming up if I search for my, my page? They have nothing to do with me or my page. And it's because things get crossed up, you know, and they, they'll use a certain asset of yours, like an application, an account or a, a page or a group even 
uh, they can use that as like their platform to in the background secretly on their own little version run their emf broadcast gang stalking live stream stuff and um you know and that's that's for absolute certain i know that and i've actually put out a lot of information over the years showing those things happening uh, and just all kinds of wild stuff, man, where like my Facebook would log in with some random email address that they made up or some gang stalker told it to me. I tried it and it worked. But yet my regular email would still work, too. And they logged into what looked like my same account. That videos, uh, it's somewhere on my channel and uh, stuff like that, you know, but um, all of that stuff is is it's a big deal and it shows uh, how things get crossed up. One of these gang stalkers used to call me and it would come up from a different number. And I'd say, where are you calling me from? And they would say, oh, my phone. And I'd say, well, it don't come up as your number, but it's, things get crossed up. And it was coming up as their virtual device number, like the number that they use for all of their neural monitoring stuff. You know, and all of these things can get uh, traced back. All right, it can all be traced back. Like, oh, they had this virtual machine using this phone number and, you know, and... And they also use, um, at the time, uh, I found it as AdWords, this same person I'm talking about that was transitioning into a gang stalker, end up with a hosting package, virtual Android on their iPad, a jailbroken iPhone, um, and uh, putting in, you know, weird stuff in the browser to log into secure type of connections and also had a ads account, a Google ads account. And a Google ads account is if like you have pages or websites or something like that, or people search certain things and like you, you can have ads come up and it could be related to your content. Um, so it's also Google ads is what it is now, I think, but AdWords is what it, what it used to be called, or maybe there are two different things, but you know, and I use Google ads and, and you can use it with YouTube and you can also use it separately. Just like if you have web pages or anything on the internet content period, you know, if people are coming to that and if you have enough traffic coming to that, then, you know, you could show that I got this much traffic, then you can start to demand a certain amount of advertising revenue for people to put their advertising there. And so for this person to suddenly have, um, you know, AdWords, Google Ads account, and uh, all these other things, you know, now, at the time, I had no idea it was mind-blowing. I didn't know what, what, they were, what they were doing with all of this weird stuff, and, um, and they didn't really tell me. So, uh, but later, you know, as, as I started to learn things, as I started to learn about uh, web development and how, um, you know, private connections and how to, like, host your own stuff and, uh, use local host and and um, I think if I was to get more advanced with that, I think what I could do is actually host my own connection or or control my own traffic from like my phones and my other devices through one centralized uh, computer that I use as a server and get it completely set up all the way right and you know and they they do a lot of things to ensure privacy and stuff like that. So when they do that, it's it's like a lot of things. Um, it just, it's the right way to do what they're doing. It makes it, uh, more difficult to detect and all of that kind of stuff. And I think really when you start looking into dark web and all that kind of stuff, you're, you're going to figure out that, um, private hosted sites, you know, are, are pretty much what the dark web is or, um, you know, underground sites or people with their own basically local host or, you know, it's just something that you should learn more about and start to get into if you want to solve these kind of problems that we have. Uh, it's definitely the direction that I'm headed. Uh, so, and, you know, and, and I'm in college for this stuff now and, um, you know, I, I'm taking it kind of slow, but I'm, I'm almost done with two whole years now and I'm doing well and, um, you know, learning about databases and, um, web development and actual coding of the different languages and all of that is um, I'm starting to get into the more advanced classes and it's going to get uh, to the point where I can come on here and explain to you 
uh, what you actually need to do step by step. This is how you need to configure your stuff. This is how you can keep gang stalkers off your stuff. This is how you, you can see who's doing what. This is how you can uh, go to the courthouse with a lawyer and file a warrant against this person and a lawsuit against this person and get your neural monitoring because they're going to always want to settle out. All right. And sadly enough, you know, it's uh, you don't want Illuminati coming to your door. Uh, like the Grim Reaper in the middle of the night. So uh, you're probably going to have to settle out. But uh, when you know enough and people that have done a lot of things to you, they're going to have to cough up something. All right. And that's, that's just how it goes. And, um, you know, they're very overextended, but they're going to have to cough up something. And they know it. They know it. But they don't think we'll ever do anything like this, the stuff I'm talking to you about. So it is what we have to do. Um, you know, but... I guess that's just kind of, that's the direction. It's the right pathway if you want to start really understanding all this stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, go get this this app or that app if you don't understand what you're doing. And there's not no there's not an app that's going to, if you're not into like command lines and, and um, you know, script editors and stuff like that, then you're probably not going to find any of the real stuff. Okay, but uh, I would say Facebook developers, Android developers, um, even like a Apple or iOS developers, all of this stuff is relevant and they're into every kind of devices and they're into all of our stuff. So anything you learn is going to help you. But these are the key points, the stuff that I'm telling you about. If, if you learn about those things, it'll give you a, a good base uh, as far as solving gang stalking problems uh, and being hacked problems. Um, so to top it off, I guess there's a few applications like for desktop, like um, Android Studio, where you can get deep into the coding of Android applications as well as Android devices. And you can also load like pre pre-made Android virtual Android devices. Um, you know, basically for like testing, um, applications that you're developing and stuff like that but um but you you know you could export that and then upload it the whole virtual machine uh onto your phone as like disguise as an application or host it in online or something like that you could just build one from scratch all of these things are possibilities so um you know i don't know which one would be easier um but i know that the person that I saw doing this stuff was doing this from Android developers and they were working with, um, and then they may have, they may have just been working on it on somebody else's machines. Cause, cause, um, I wasn't around them all that much, but when I was, I was finding out a lot, but you know, for them to be able to log into a virtual Android from their iPad and, you know, have to put in all this static PHP, something, something secure, this and that on their, uh, browser address bar, you know, that's relevant. It's very relevant. And, um, and later I did, I did find out a, that a lot of that stuff is, is like actually, um, legit gang stalking methods. It is what they do. It's how they operate. And I know it to be fact. So it's 100% something that we should be learning about. Um, Xcode is basically the same as, uh, Android studio, except for it's for Apple. So if you want to get into like iOS stuff and virtual iPhones and stuff like that, then you would you would work with uh, Xcode. So uh, you're going to want to at least know your way around those a little bit. Um, I'm not as familiar with iOS, which is weird because I mostly use Apple devices. But um, the Android Studio, I know I could plug an Android into it and I could like type in a... a command and have it like back up the whole Android, um, you know, everything from the Android. And that's like, it's like backup all or full backup all or something like that is some command and it'll back up your whole Android. And, and that includes their files that they have on your device. And it would also uh, bring it up and like, really, you could get in depth into the file systems and you could do a lot of things like by plugging your Android into your laptop and opening up Android Studio, you can do a lot of things. And um, the same with same with uh, Xcode, though, with Apple devices. So these are definitely some things that you should probably consider. And uh, all of this stuff is um, 
you know, you're, you're going to be a little overwhelmed. Like, where do I even start? Just start real basic. Just start real basic and watch some introduction to uh, HTML or get like a book to HTML book or, uh, you know, introduction to Android Studio. and Watch some YouTube videos and stuff like that. And it, it, it can help you. And if you follow along and you stay persistent with it, then some months down the road, you'll start learning things that start really scaring the people that are bothering you. And uh, you, you really have to stay on it, though. You have to stay on it. And you can't say, oh, this is too much. You know, no, it's not for me. I'm not tech savvy or whatever, all of that stuff. You, you can't do that. You have to be very determined and decide, oh, okay. And it's not going to come easy. And just like anything, you know, think about how long you try to learn things that you know how to do so easily now. You know, you know how to do something with ease, with no problems, like second nature. But it took you so long to learn those things. But, you know, and this is the same. Computer stuff is the same. And you can sit there and work on it for a month and, and hardly get anywhere. And then one day you're going to have a breakthrough. And then it's going to, you're going to be understanding a lot more things. And you start to be able to make progress a lot faster. And it starts to become second nature. Uh, but all of these things are extremely important points of interest and uh, points of study. And I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. I witnessed a lot of this stuff firsthand with gang stalkers using Facebook, uh, Android, virtual Androids, and um, hosting packages, um, FTP, uh, file transfer protocol platforms like uh, FileZilla and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and all of all of these things that I'm telling you, it's the absolute truth. And, um, you know, having these public YouTube videos has cost me a lot socially, all right, with like people out there in the world. But I feel like it's worth it because I don't have much of a choice. You know, if I don't if I don't come out and say all this stuff, then who knows how how much they would be doing to me if I was just being quiet about it and isolating myself like they want. Um, but at the same time, it has cost me a lot, you know, and it still is costing me. And um, gang stalkers want to isolate you. And they are still attacking and bothering and scaring people that I'm close to as a tactic to try to isolate me. And it's not cool. It's not going to be tolerated. And uh, I know there's like, they're like, oh, huh, huh, but there's nothing I can do about it, right? Yeah, there's nothing I can do about it except for uh, stay committed to this process. Stay committed to this process and know that uh, I will win. I will understand all this stuff. I will have the knowledge and the resources uh, financially and otherwise to be a huge burden on these people that would commit such atrocities against humanity. And they, they know it. They know it. And um, they hope you give up and they hope that you'll, uh, you know, get on medications and fade away as, and, or, you know, become some kind of loser or a homeless drug addict or something. They, they hope all of those things and they'd love to make you look like some sort of deranged psychopath that, that they can portray in that light. But uh, if you continue to work on things, it might take a few years to really get your foothold into like understanding a lot of this stuff and, and to finding um, financial stability and uh, employment stability and mental stability with them bothering you? How can I go to work every day with them bothering me? How can I sit here and study and read books with them bothering me? And um, we are very resilient, the most resilient probably of any other species. Um, so that's how, that's how you just continue to persist and stay on the course and stay uh, committed to the process. And, you know, some amount of time, you'll start to gain traction. Any traction you gain builds confidence and motivation. And um, when, when you feel better about it, you, you start to know that you'll win. And, and you start to notice that they know that they're going to lose. And that's a big deal. Okay, that's a big deal for them to know that they're going to have to just become, uh, you know, some kind of, some kind of, relentless gangsters for real, real life gangsters to stop you. And they'll never do that. And it's just, it's facts. Okay. So, um, anyway, these are, these are the important things and this is the pathway. So 
please take my advice and anything you can get into to start studying those things. All right, it's a it's a really good uh, pathway, and you'll notice the, that it bothers them and it scares them, and that they don't want you doing it. And um, final note, uh, you know, never mind. I'll talk about all this in the next next video. Thank you guys for watching. Please take my advice. I'll see you next time.